Hi everyone. Today we're going to look at supply and demand and we're going to focus on the movement of prices. So we all deal with prices and we all purchase various goods and services, but we're going to focus on how prices are determined in our economy of various goods that we purchase. We're going to draw a simple supply and demand graph. Here's the demand curve. This is looking at buyers. Here's the supply curve. That's looking at sellers. When we're in equilibrium, let's assume this is the price of gas. And if the price of gas, let's assume, is $4, that's where buyers and sellers agree upon the price. Now, let's assume the equilibrium quantity is 100 units. The question I have, do you think Class, do you think that stores know what price that buyers and sellers are willing to pay a particular good or service? No, they don't. They can't understand what buyers are willing to pay, and sellers are always trying to raise prices, but if buyers don't want to buy that at that particular price, they're not going to uh, purchase it, which will signal something to the market. So I'm going to give you a hypothetical scenario because sellers and buyers don't know what this is called as equilibrium price. Let's assume we put a price out there of $6 for this particular good, and we're trying to test the market. So now, at $6, you're gonna draw a line over. You're gonna see where does it hit the supply curve, which is right here, and at the supply curve, we have, let's say, 120 units are being supplied at $6. Now, right here, this is where it hits the demand curve. Let's assume only 80 people want it at $6. However, 120 units are being supplied. So class, what would that be classified as? A surplus or a shortage? When there's more available than people want. Surplus more available than people want. So now if I had a surplus and I had too much of this inventory available, class, what would I do with the price? Would I raise it or lower it? I would lower the price. So now let's say I get very nervous about this and I don't know if consumers are gonna buy this or not because I have an inventory on my shelves. So I dramatically lower the price, let's say, to $2. At $2, do the same thing we just did before. We draw a line straight across, and we want to see where does it hit the demand curve, right here. Let's say 150 people want it at $2, and let's say, here's where it hits the supply curve, at 80 units. So 150 people want it at $2. However, only 80 units are on the shelf. Given that example, you notice there's a shortage that exists. And if a shortage exists of 70 units, and I'm a store owner, I must have maybe sold that too cheap. And so what I'm going to do is raise price. But what is a nice thing about this graph is everything is always going towards equilibrium in each instance. Market prices are flexible and gravitate towards equilibrium at every instance. And that's a good thing. The government never had to say, at $6, you better lower your price. And the government, the government never had to tell you, at $2, to raise prices. Prices would always adjust based on the flexibility of consumers and sellers making adjustments in the market. Not enough people or too many people are buying it. That signals to the market, maybe the price is too cheap. Not enough people are buying it. I don't know what's going on, but maybe I better lower the price. This is a good example of the flexibility of prices that we're looking at, and it establishes how consumers and buyers, or how consumers and firms will make decisions in the market. 